Hello, everybody. It's good to be back with you uh, in our uh, devotional cast. We are in the book of Matthew. Uh, this is my first time to talk to you since Easter, uh, Resurrection Sunday. I Hopefully, everybody had a great day, and I know you heard from Jay yesterday, and uh, I'm with you today. We are in Matthew chapter 16. Uh, I invite you to open your Bibles. Hopefully, you've read the chapter. If not, just pause this for a moment and, and read the chapter. I'm just going to hit some of the highlights, uh, some various things. don't have time to get into all of it, but hopefully something that will uh, spur your attention and cause you to want to study and, and look into things a little bit deeper and hopefully uh, help, help you in your daily walk. Uh, it's it's exciting to be able to get into God's Word. Even though we're separated, uh, this gives us opportunity to, to communicate a little bit with one another and, and let God communicate to us primarily through His Word. But anyway, let's get right into things. Matthew chapter 16. Uh, it starts off uh, talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees and them demanding signs, uh, miracles. And rather than me spend any time talking about this, I'm going to encourage you to go back and listen to this past Sunday's children's story time. Jay uses these verses in his children's story time, and he explains them very well. He explains them to where four, five, and six-year-olds can understand them, and uh, I believe you will gain from it as well. Uh, I sat and listened to it, and I thought, oh, this is great. So go back and, and, and listen to that. And so I'm not going to spend any time on that. I do want to mention in verse 4, it says, an, an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign. And in talking about this, I, I just wanted to hit on it briefly. Uh, it's evil because... They were seeking to destroy Jesus. That's why they were seeking a sign. Uh, that was the evil part. And the adulterous part is that uh, they were leaving God and going to pursue their own doctrines. And that corresponds with adultery. It wasn't physical adultery as we would think of a, as man, woman, or or, or whatever, it was from God's way, leaving God's way to go and do things their way or following their traditions or whatever they were seeking. So that's what he's talking about there. But anyway, let's move on. And in verses six and following, he starts talking about uh, the leaven of the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now we all know that leaven is what causes bread to rise uh, when one adds just a little bit of leaven. In one place it talks about a little leaven goes a long way. It leavens the whole loaf. And it's so true that just a little bit of evil, a little bit of false doctrine, a little bit of hatred or, or whatever might be going on that's contrary to God's will, contrary to what his word teaches us, uh, a little leaven is going to create problems. And so he talks about, uh, he, he he gets in and starts talking uh, about the, the leaven. And then he talks about, you know, the disciples says, you know, we don't have any food. And he says, remember what I did, you know, with a couple fish and five loaves, you know, don't worry about that stuff. You know, don't, don't sweat the small stuff. You know, I, I, I've got this. And, and so he, he talks about those things. And then he gets into Peter's confession. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this either. Uh, we've, we've talked about it in the past, I know, and uh, there'll be many other lessons in the future. But uh, I, I do want to note a couple things because we talk about Peter so much. Uh, Peter just comes to the forefront so many times. And so many times... You know, we say, Peter, uh, we've talked about how he says, oh, ye of little faith. And 
And it's Peter that was the one that, you know, we just talked about. He got out of the boat. The others were in there. But he says, whenever he started to sink, he says, you had a little faith. Well, this one time, it's not, oh, Peter, ye of little faith. He says in verse 17, blessed are you. Peter got it. And so Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. You know, Peter got it. And Jesus compliments him for it. And, you know, I'm not going to get into, you know, Peter, that upon this rock I'll build my church. We know that the church was not built on Peter. Peter was not the rock. He was talking about that. Uh, and just read it. It's, it's not hard to understand. It's what people try to do and how they change things and, and try to make doctrines after their own lust, like uh, Paul told Timothy, would happen. And so he, he talks about this, and, and, and he compliments Peter. Uh, and he says, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. Uh, the kingdom is, is coming soon. And you're going to be a part of that. You're going to be involved in that. Now, at this point, Peter doesn't understand what that is uh, exactly. But uh, Jesus is telling him, uh, you will soon. You will understand. And by, as he talks about that, he goes into the very next thing that he starts foretelling of his death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, you know, this is something that the disciples don't want to hear because what are they looking for? In this kingdom, they're still thinking a physical kingdom like David had. The kingdom was going to be restored here on earth and they're expecting a physical kingdom just like that. And so Jesus starts talking about how he's going to be killed and how he's going to be resurrected. And man, that just does not sink in with Peter and the apostles. They just don't grasp that yet because they just can't comprehend what he's saying and, and what he's telling them. And Peter it says that he took Jesus aside. And this is uh, in verse 22. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Peter is rebuking Jesus, the son of God. Peter had very strong feelings about what was going to take place. And he's saying, no, this will never happen. And he's rebuking Jesus. Remember, it's Jesus, I mean, it's Peter that pulls out his sword and is ready to fight whenever they come to arrest Jesus. Well, you know, Peter says, no, Lord, this will not have it. Far be from it, you, far be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. And what does Jesus say? Get behind me, Satan. Now, Jesus is not, calling Peter a devil. Peter is, uh, Jesus is telling Peter, he's simply rebuking him for what he's saying. And he's rebuking him strongly. But Peter had rebuked the Lord pretty strongly prior to this. And so he's not calling him a devil. He's just telling him he's got some misguided zeal. And that zeal we know he continues to have up until the arrest of our Lord. And so these things taking place here uh, are unfolding and we get to sit here and read it. And we've read further and we know, as Paul Harvey used to say, we know the rest of the story. Uh, this is unfolding uh, day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute for the apostles and they're having to learn as they go and they don't get to know the rest of the story like we do. And so let's, let's be easy on them. So Jesus 
tells Peter, get behind me, Satan. Uh, set your things on God, uh, not on things of man. And then scripture that we often talk about, take up your cross and follow me. In verses 24 uh, and following, it says, then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now that's a challenge for them. It's a challenge for us today that we have to deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow him. Now we know that when we obey the gospel, when we become a Christian, when we become obedient to God's instructions for salvation under the new law, after his death, burial, and resurrection. We see it unfolding in Acts chapter two. We read through the book of Acts and we see all the conversion stories and we see what each and every one of them uh, did. But just like Jesus talked to Nicodemus in John chapter three about being born again, uh, when we take up our cross and follow Jesus, we have to deny self. All those things that are important to us have to become secondary. God's number one. God's will, God's our service to him is number one. It doesn't matter what we have, what we do, anything. Uh, it's more important than our jobs. It's more important than our bank accounts. It's more important than the things that we have, uh, the material things even relationships. He says we have to deny self, take up our cross, follow him. What's it take to follow Jesus? To do what he says. John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That's what he's talking about us doing. And then in the very last verse of the chapter, he says, truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And I'd mentioned that before. All the Bible from Genesis all the way through the Gospels is pointing to the kingdom to come. The Lord's Prayer that we talked about earlier, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He says that the kingdom is coming and some of it will happen before some of them even die. It comes in their lifetime. And so realizing that uh, the kingdom has come now, and we see it come in uh, Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, uh, we need to realize those things. So that's just a, a quick overview of some of Matthew 16. Go back and dig into it a little bit more. And uh, I pray that you... Uh, will be blessed and that you will grow in your knowledge, that you will seek the wisdom that God offers us. And uh, until next time, Jay will be with you tomorrow and uh, look forward to, to seeing you uh, as long as we have to this way and uh, have a blessed day. Let's end with a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we humbly bow before you. Thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for giving us opportunity to be able to study it together, even though we're apart. We're thankful for all the modern day uh, inventions that we have so that we can still communicate with one another, that we can still be there for one another. Bless each and every one. Help us to grow in the knowledge and the wisdom of your word. Uh, Grant us that wisdom that we need to discern right from wrong, to seek your will. And dear Lord, we just pray that we will deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. And let the church say, amen.